Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Vedran and today I will tell you about unique key violation and how to avoid it. It sounds very simple, but it is not. Let me show you in one example. So we have a table here, test is the name, with ID, which is identity, integer, code, which is another integer with unique uh, non-clustered index, constraint, and then a filler just to take some bytes. And uh, if we look at the table with SPX details, then we see that we have two indexes. One is clustered index on ID and one is non-clustered on code. And what I want to do is insert, insert rows with unique code or token or anything unique. And I want to generate it, let's say randomly with multiple sessions and I don't want to get unique key violation ever. So I code, code like this, insert into table the code which doesn't exist already in that table. So I'm inserting the code which doesn't exist in this table already. And that should work, right? Well, maybe we shall see. So uh, we have a loop. We have a loop to iterate through, through the code many times and tries code one, code two, etc. By one by one, bigger and bigger code. And I will do it from two sessions. Therefore, I will copy that loop into another, another session. I will put it here. So I have two, one and two. Currently table is empty uh, or yeah, rows are zero, so table is empty. And I will start a loop here. It's inserting the rows and start a loop here, inserting the rows. So they are both happily, oh no, uh, we have error here, so I will stop the other one. Why this happened? Cannot insert duplicate key. I protected it with this where clause. Why? Why this happened? Do you have any idea? Well, I will explain it. So we have two sessions. I started the first one and it's inserted many rows and then other session started. So um, the first session is doing inserts. It does a lot of, it has a lot to do. Insert is a heavy operation. But this other session, second session, is lagging behind, but it doesn't have much to do because it sees a hard row with that code already exists, skip to next code. So it just skips the rows. It doesn't do any insert. It has less work to do. Therefore, it is faster. And after some time, the gap is closed and they are aligned. They are trying to insert the same code and then they're racing each other. It's a true race condition. And in microsecond, they are almost the same. They're almost, they're trying to insert the same co code, the same token. And they are checking, is this token already there? It is not. And they both receive, it is not already there. And they both try to insert the same code. First one succeeds because it is a fraction of microsecond uh, faster. And the second one tries to insert but cannot and fails with unique key. So that is what is happening. Even we, we do have a check, unique key violation happens. So how to really solve that? Well, uh, there are two magic words and I will write that down. We will add two magical words with, so uh, apt lock, update lock, hold lock. So let me copy that over to, to the other session too. And let's try now. I will delete, um, I will delete all the rows from the table, aha, uh -huh, truncate, okay. 
and now I will start the first one, the second one, they are executing and let me check the row count from some other session. It is 100,000, 150,000, 170,000, 200,000, no error and, and it will keep up forever, no error occurs. So what is so different between normal statement and the statement with two magical hints? Well, let me show you. I will stop this sessions not to fill my disk. So let's see how far it went. Almost half a million rows. Okay, what happens exactly? Uh, I need the help from uh, trace flags to show, to, to show which locks are acquired. So I will do, I will do, I will in fact truncate the table. Then I will do an um, insert, insert. But now we have we have a lot of we have a lot of these messages because because um, uh, extents are allocated, a lot of metadata updated. Therefore, I will delete the row and I will do the insert again and again. Now it is simple. No metadata is updated. No statistics, etc. So just that insert. And if we analyze this, we have intent exclusive lock on object. That object, if we if we um, if we examine the object name, let's paste it. That object is our test table, and if we so it is locking the table entire object with intent lock that means below the in hierarchy below some real exclusive locks will be held so then intent lock on the page and we have this triple intent lock on page then range lock then x lock on key we have it twice first and second time because we have two indexes clustered index non-clustered index so let's see which page this is. This page we can discover using a DBCC page. So let's print DBCC page. We can see index ID and object ID. Object is our table. We already know that. Index ID is one. That means clustered index. Clustered index always has one. And uh, that means this page belongs to clustered index. And page, this page, this other page, let's see. Object is the same and index ID is two. That is non-clustered index. So this page belongs to a non-clustered index. And then we have our object ID and we have some hashes. So it first locks the page of the clustered index, then range lock insert null. That means it locks the range of keys just for the case if some um, serializable session, so session in, in higher isolation level occurs just to make sure they, they, they do not step on each other's toes. That, that is just for that, for just in case. So uh, we have then X locks on key, that means on a row of index, uh, key of the index of the clustered index is um, hashed, value of that row is hashed and then uh, put in the lock list. 
So this is the... Uh, how do I know? Well, let me show you how do I know. Because... Because if I use this lockres special function and I select from the table star, it will use the clustered index. And if I select from star from the table again, but I'm using non-clustered index, I will get different value because each index, so we have only one row, we have only one row in the table, but if we, if we use the clustered index, hash of the clustered key is this. And hash of the non-clustered key is this. So just remember 510, 4a0. 510 is clustered key. So go there and see. We have a key, lo a key lock on clustered index row. And then we have a... Th that is in fact clustered index locking. And then we have a non-clustered index page with intent exclusive. Then a range lock on the range of keys in that non-clustered index. And then we have exclusive lock on the key of non-clustered index before inser insertion occurs. So let's see what changes when we, when we put... I will copy that. I will copy that and see what changes if I add with... What changes when I do this? I will do a deletion and then I will do insertion. Okay, still, still I have a lot of rows. Okay, now it is here. What changed? You will see not much. Everything, almost everything is the same, almost everything. But something changed and what is that? Can you see it? Update lock. So we have intent exclusive lock on object, but uh, we have update lock on the key before even insertion started. Remember, I deleted all the rows. Table is empty. So we will do insert. But before we attempt the insert, we are locking the key of a row. Which row? Row that doesn't exist yet. We didn't insert it, anything. So we are locking the something that doesn't exist. We are putting that hash in the list of locks in with, with this select part. So we have this select part that searches for some code. But in that search, I'm putting the lock on the key of that code. Even that row doesn't exist at all. And then I'm doing exclusive lock on clustered index, exclusive lock on non-clustered index, and actual insert is, is happening. And when other session comes, and searches for a row, is this row free? It tries to put update lock on this select part. It tries to put the update lock on the row. And if other session already passed that point, he, this second session cannot put the update lock because update and update are incompatible, incompatible. And then it will wait. Second session will wait. First session will proceed will insert the row and finish releasing the locks. Then the second session can get the update lock and see, aha, uh -huh, that row exists. I cannot insert it, exit, no insertion. And therefore no duplicate key violation. And uh, that's the whole secret, that's the whole thing. So just remember, it's not that difficult. Explanation is maybe for a little bit deeper, but uh, Solution is quite simple. Just add two magical words, update lock and hold lock, and your code be, will be free of this error, which is not that easy to get rid of, but now you know how to get rid of. 
Um, thank you very much for attention and uh, hope to see you soon in some other video. Bye-bye.